the right settings on the computer, uh, having the right parameters, making some tweaks in the settings. So those were one part of the uh, story. The second part uh, effectively comes up when you have already done your calculations, when you have done your toolpaths, and now you are ready now to simulate those toolpaths. Now, when it comes to simulation, again, there are two branches. First is the simulation itself, and the second one is the stock updation that happens at the background when the simulation is running. When you are uh, when you're doing small paths or medium paths, let's say about 200 millimeter by 300 millimeter, you don't see the effect of these things which are happening in the background on your file or on your system because the, uh, the effect is very minimal. What, however, uh, makes a difference is uh, the parts when they become large. For example, the part that you're seeing on the screen right now, that's about 900 millimeter in length and about 400 millimeter in width and about 200 millimeter in height. And it's got hundreds of surfaces. When such parts are machined and they are simulated, there are a lot of things that happen in the background that uh, really affect, one, the performance, and second, the size of the file itself. So we are going to see some settings within SolidCam that either eliminate all these things that are happening in the background and yet maintain the same speed and uh, ease of working and smoothness of simulation uh, by changing up a few things in, in the settings of both solid cam as well as the simulation itself. Okay. The first one uh, that we're going to see is basically uh, the settings in general. Uh, these are basically settings that you need to do before you start solid cam. So just before you begin uh, to uh, work with solid cam, uh, you need to do the settings. And the first setting is you have to disable. If this, these things are only valid uh, if you're having a big mold, a big part with hundreds or thousands of surfaces that you machine, you're, you're about to machine. So these settings are valid only for these parts. If you have a small part or a medium part, I don't think this settings would be needed to be tinkered with because your existing setting works very well. So the first thing that we, uh, I advise you to do is to disable auto saving. By default, your auto saving would be set to about five or ten minutes. It depends on how uh, you have done it, but the default settings, I guess, is about five minutes. So you need to change that. I put some big value. Put maybe one thousand minutes or three hundred minutes, but put a big value. Don't put zero, but put something big value. What basically this does is, if you are working with a huge file and there are there are a lot of processes that are on, when you try to save, when the system tries to save this file, it needs to shut down all those processes that are running in the background and then save it. What this basically would do is, it will take a lot of your memory and a lot of your load on the CPU and it will slow down your system considerably. So it, it will be frustrating for, for the user to, uh, to, uh, to see his system slow down and go sluggish every five, 10 minutes when he's doing a lot of work. So the first thing that you need to do before you even you start your uh, uh, programming your part is to disable the autosave or to increase the time of autosave to such an extent that it actually doesn't affect any of your process or any of your toolpath calculation itself. Apart from this general setting, we can also do a lot of other settings. Now, these settings are within uh, the Solid Verify or Quick Solid Verify. So let me first uh, quickly show you where the setting is on the software. Okay, if I go to Tool, Solid Cam, and if we go into the Solid Cam settings, Here. 
this is the place where you need to change this value. Now this has to be done or you move into solid cam or before you start your solid cam process itself. So change this, put some put some big value, 360 minutes, so that for the next six hours at least it will not do an auto save. The user can always save it manually, but at least the system will try to do an auto save. Because when it tries to do that, it takes a lot of your memory and CPU, especially if you're doing huge parts. Okay? Right. So that's uh, that's one. The next settings that we're going to see are more with uh, the simulation settings itself. And these are within Solid Verify and Quick Solid Verify. Right. Now you, uh, the, many times people ask me why are these two simulation modes given inside Solid Cam? Why not just Solid Verify or just Quick Solid Verify? Why are these two given? Now, when you're doing huge parts, you'll probably realize the use of, of one of them. It's, uh, it's either Solid Verify or Quick Solid Verify. So today I'm going to uh, explain to you how both of them work and which of them you need to use when you're running really large parts with with tool path that runs into uh, 100,000 lines or even more, sometimes few million lines of code. So you need to understand which one to use and where to use it. First thing, when you're doing uh, any 3D machining operations like mold or a die or let's say uh, uh, a huge aerospace part with with uh, several hundreds of surfaces and a lot of uh, G code being generated. In such case, make it a point to always use Quick Solid Verify. If I have to put it in a nutshell, you need to use Quick Solid Verify whenever you're doing HSM, HSR, or any 3D milling operation. Quick Solid Verify gives much quicker results in 3D milling operations for extremely large parts. We have a customer in, uh, in, uh, who is using SolidCam and uh, he actually had a lot of complaints about uh, the simulation itself. One moment. Okay, uh, so this customer was complaining a lot about uh, the uh, simulation speeds because he was doing uh, pretty large parts. In on one of his parts, Solid Verify was taking almost an one almost an hour to simulate, and sometimes going into a loop. And that's when we uh, came across did some settings and made him run that particular part on Quick Solid Verify and the entire simulation finished in under six minutes. It was a huge part but the time difference between Solid Verify and Quick Solid Verify was substantial. It's like 60 minutes or more in Solid Verify and about under six minutes in Quick Solid Verify. It's, it's a big difference it also uh, it also uh, gives a lot of uh, good feeling to the programmer because he doesn't feel frustrated waiting for the simulation to finish. So the first uh, gospel is when you're doing a 3D milling operation or when your when your part has a lot of 3D milling operations, you should use Quick Solid Verify since it gives much faster results. Now, why is that Quick Solid Verify gives quicker results than Solid Verify? This question, the answer is in the next slide. It's, it's in the way in which Solid, Quick Solid Verify has been developed. How does Quick Solid Verify work? Quick Solid Verify actually creates an accurate model of the machine stock by storing the analytical definitions of all surfaces that are created during machining. So it's it's doing, it's it's like storing all your analytical surfaces within the simulation. And after calculations are performed for that particular analytical surface, that's why you don't see the tool. When you do quick solid verify, you see that 
it runs several hundred thousand lines and then it shows you the uh, result. It goes on showing that. So when the calculations are performed, it generates a surface mesh pack again that is basically specified or generated for a specific number of cutting moves and it's then rendered to visualize the cutting result. The rendering in case of Quick Solid Verify is almost realistic because you can zoom into a particular area and you could actually do a further refining of the entire simulation itself. And this is the main reason, the, the main reason why Quick Solid Verify is much faster than Solid Verify is this because it works on analytical geometries. Okay? And this is exactly opposite when you go to Solid Verify. Okay, there is quickly a question. Somebody asked me whether if uh, Quick Solid Verify shows the gouges. It does, but unlike Solid Verify, it doesn't show them in between the simulation, but it shows at the end of the simulation. Basically, if any areas are, are gouged, those areas will be marked red. Other than the color of the tool, it will be marked red. If, let's say, there is a, there is a, a rapid collision, that area will be marked red. Or if there's a holder collision, that area will be marked red, but the simulation won't stop. It will just continue because because it's it's uh, it's it's the it's in the way it has been designed that the uh, calculations are done and it keeps generating the surface meshes to show you the result. So the uh, exact uh, exact gouges or exact areas where there has been fouling of the tool will be displayed after it has done the uh, generation of the mesh, okay? Right. Now, how Solid Verify works is exactly opposite to the way Quick Solid Verify works, okay? Solid Verify works uh, like you work on a solid modeling engine. It works with a faceted representation of both the model as, as well as the tool. So what it basically does is it creates a faceted model of a stock and it creates a faceted model of the tool and it keeps on doing Boolean operation at every point on the tool path. So there is a Boolean operation happening at every point. Initially, these Boolean operations are fast because the faceted model and the tool are pretty simple. It's just a cube with few a few triangles and another uh, cylinder or a spear with maybe 100, 100 triangles, so it, the Boolean operation is much quicker. But as, as the tool paths start increasing, you go from one, two, three, and you go into the finishing, uh, semi-finishing, finishing, the faceted model becomes really complex and the Boolean operation starts slowing down. When this happens, you will see that your simulation starts getting slower and slower because this particular uh, uh, simulation engine it's actually not meant to handle such large amounts of data for that we have got another simulation engine itself which I just uh, talked about quick solid verify so solid verify basically does this boolean operation at every point and that is one of the reason why it comes up with the uh, errors of gouges when the simulation is going on itself because it's doing boolean of calculations at every point and if it feel if it sees that there has been a gouge it just stops because it then uh, tells the user that there has been a violation because it sees that violation while it's doing the boolean operation so the message is straight away displayed to the user this is one of the reasons why solid verify becomes slower for really large parts and should not be used for large parts you should use uh, the quick solid verify. After understanding the difference between both of these engines, uh, we also need to understand, I talked about several processes running in the background when simulation is happening. So one of the processes that happens when you're when you're doing simulation, which you probably won't understand, is the updated stock files are actually being saved behind. In your, in your part. If you're using the internal mechanism of uh, solid cam, which, in which only an SLT PRT file will be generated and nothing else, in such case, all these updated stock files are actually being saved into the SLD PRT file. Now, why is this done? 
this is done because let's say you have simulated the entire part and now you go back home next day morning you come you feel that probably the tenth tool path you need to have a look at it again so you right click on the tenth tool path and click simulate immediately you have got the model or the stock that was saved for the ninth operation now this does not did not come out from nowhere this this came out because the ninth operation stock was actually saved on your part itself and it just loaded back that particular stock now all these files are really heavy depending on how much or what what size of part you are and what kind of operations you have done on the part how many uh, what is your down step side step depending on what how what is the length of your code it can be really heavy so if you're doing large parts make sure that you disable the saving of updated stocks it you might again spend time to re-simulate everything once again that would that would be much faster than having this really heavy part load back again and to the simulation so you make sure by default the save updated stock model for every operation is set to one that means after every operation it will save the update stock. If you don't want, uh, uh, if you don't want that, it doesn't do saving at all. You could put, let's say, 10. You have what, let's say, 30 tool parts. You put 10 as the number there. So you are telling SolidCam to save updated for every 10th operation. So if you let, let's say, you want to simulate the 11th operation, it will only reload back the 10th stock or uh, operate the uh, stock for operation number 10. But if you want to do a simulation of let's say 14th tool path, then it will load and recalculate the entire up updation from 11, 12, and 13 and give you that update stock. But if you want to do again for let's say uh, 21st tool path, it will just take the 20th stock and it will start simulating. But apart from this time taken to uh, recalculate and reload it, I'll show you a very interesting. Uh, scenario okay you can see on my screen at the moment I loaded a Explorer and there are two parts in it okay uh, let me see if I can zoom it no there's no way to zoom it okay there are two parts in this both are same both have the same tool path in them okay the first one the simulation was completed with save updated stock model for every zero operation that means the save updated stock operations were disabled the second one was saved for every subsequent tool path or every subsequent operation once the entire simulation was done we just came out of the uh, of solid cam I did nothing closed everything and here are the file sizes the one that doesn't have the save updated stock for uh, or it's not saving any updated stock is only 86 megabytes whereas the file that's done saving of updated stock for every tool path is 1.3 gigabytes so imagine the next time you would want to load this file back again first of all it's going to take a long time to load it it's going to take a lot of memory it's going to take a lot of CPU apart from this you imagine the amount of time it will take to save back this 1.3 gigabytes back on your hard drive so it's very important that if you're doing large parts I'm not talking about small and medium ones that those are fine those won't those won't uh, change so so dramatically there will be a very small change but for large parts with many tool parts in it you will see that the the difference in file size is very dramatic from what you're seeing in front from 86 megabytes it can go all the way up to 1.3 gigabytes so it's very important that uh, yes uh, somebody asked me are you recommending it to set to zero for large parts yes please set it to zero because uh, uh, otherwise you would you would end up having your file size really huge you set it to zero you actually don't change anything in your file size so if your file size let's say is 100 megabytes it will only stay 100 megabytes whether you're doing simulation one time or you're simulating 10 times 
the file size will stay the same uh, and it, it won't change. So you will work much faster, you'll simulate, simulate much faster. Everything will happen very quick as if you're working on a small file. So it's very important to have this uh, setting done again before you move into uh, uh, SolidCam or if, even if you've moved into SolidCam, you could go into the part settings and change this value. It can be a part dependent setting. It need not be a global setting, but it can be a part dependent setting. That means you need not set it always to zero for, for globally. That means for, for, for all the parts that you're doing, probably you're doing only 10% of large parts. So you don't want to disable the stock for all the other 90%. So you could go into that particular file and using the part settings, do a local setting and say, you do not want to save the stock for every operation. So my recommendation is zero. Like I said, you could put it at 10 or even at 20, depending on the number of tool parts that you have in your file. Uh, there's another question. I'm sorry, but I'm, I need to answer this question. Uh, somebody asked if all of this data uh, can be lost by uh, cleaning up. Uh, the answer is yes, and the answer is no, because there are two types of cleanups that uh, are possible. I'll just uh, come to that. Mm, let's go back to solid cam. The first cleanup happens uh, out here in this. Okay, you select all of them and you click OK. That's the first cleanup that will happen out here. The second cleanup happens within the simulation itself. So if I go to, let's say, solid verify, <clears throat> okay, and before you even start, you can delete all updated stock files. So these are the two cleanups that you will have to do. But trust me, it's more easier to get set that to zero and work and then change it back if you feel that you don't like this method and you, you're okay with the uh, with the cam part getting heavy, then you could go back and set it to again one or five or ten, whatever is there. But as far as the cleanup goes, you'll have to clean it up at two different places. One is in the cam part itself and one is in the simulation because the cam part will not clean up these files because these files are created by simulation. There are two types of, of uh, updated stock files possible. The first is created by solid verify and these are .stl files. So you'll see a lot of .stl files if you're using solid verify. But if you're using the solid quick solid verify that also will generate uh, a lot of uh, updated stock files but those will be in .stf format. So these are two files you will see in your camp part directory that you'll see that their sizes are pretty huge, a few hundred megabytes each of them for each tool path. So this cleanup should happen at two places in, 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 the, in the event that you would like, you don't want to change that setting that I just told you to zero, you want to keep it at one, then you need to keep cleaning this file every now and then to make it come back to its original size. Okay, let's get back. The other thing is, uh, I have noticed many, many a times, is people use really unreasonable tool facet tolerance. What is a tool uh, facet tolerance, basically? It's basically we are trying to control the appearance of the tool, okay? Uh, if you keep a very tight tolerance, remember the Boolean operation of solid verify. If you're keeping a tight tolerance for the tool facet, your Boolean operation is going to be that slower because it needs, it needs more time, it needs more CPU, it needs more memory to, to do this Boolean operation with a much tighter uh, component. So what we uh, generally recommend if you're doing a large part is not to keep the tool facet tolerance under 0.1. Anything above 0.1 is pretty much okay. So even 0.1 is perfectly fine for, for simulation because with quick solid verify you can be very precise uh, with the with the disc, with the uh, final appearance of the cut part, which I'll show you in a, in some time. And the most important thing when you're using quick solid verify when you start using it is 
when you're doing large parts, it's generally not needed or it doesn't make sense to look at every tool uh, movements or the animation of the tool at every point. It generally doesn't make sense. If it's not important to you, you just want to see how the final roughed out block looks like, and if the animation is not very important to you, just jump to the turbo mode. The turbo mode significantly speeds up the quick solid verify simulation itself, and it will immediately display the uh, tool path after it has finished the complete uh, cutting. So it won't show you the intermediate results, but it will show you immediately the final result of that particular tool path. So if you use, let's say, 10 tool paths to simulate, the refresh will happen after the end of every tool path. So you don't waste time looking at the animation. Because in, let's say you're doing, uh, in, maybe in roughing the animation is uh, important to you, so you don't use turbo. But if you go into finishing and there are a lot of linear passes, you don't want to see the tool going from one point to the other doing linear machining. You just push the turbo, the entire finishing after it's done, immediately the results are displayed to you in form of a mesh, much accurate mesh. So if the animation is not important, push the turbo mode. Some more settings again in uh, Quick Solid Verify. What we need to do is uh, the animation redraw interval. The, the default redraw interval sometimes is pretty small. It's like 20 or 30. And it forces the system to redraw or refresh that cutting area every 25 or 30 moves, whatever has been set. You can change this and set to maximum the value 1000. 1000 is the maximum. You need not, you, you can't cross beyond 1000, but you can set that refresh value at 1000. So after every 1000 blocks, you will see it will refresh. What this does basically, it improves your uh, simulation time greatly. It, it improves it much, much more than what you would generally imagine. It's not 5, 10 times, it's, it's even more than that. So move away from the default value and set a value of about 1,000 for the refresh. So after every 1,000 blocks, there will be a refresh. For small parts, you could go back to your default. Again, this could be a part setting. You need not do it on a global level. But you could just keep changing. You're going to a big part, just change this and start the simulation. But for small parts, you could keep it uh, to the default because you would like to see those moves in small parts. Another very important thing that could save uh, you some memory and the uh, simulation startup time uh, is basically disable the automatic loading of target number. You can always load it manually after you go into the simulation. Because in the simulation, your target model is needed only to check if you have left out any material or if you have eaten away more material, only to do a comparison. You don't really need the target model to do any uh, simulation. But by loading the target model, you are actually making your simulation that heavy because it needs to take the target model also into account when it's doing the simulation. Instead of that, you just say don't load the target model and you could just do the simulation without the target model and when you would like to do a comparison you could go into the simulation and say load the target model and then run the comparison. This can significantly reduce the time to start the simulation because it doesn't have to create that STL and load the target into uh, the simulation itself. Another very important thing, again this is an optional thing because it also does a great uh, help or it does uh, major help in terms of saving you a lot of time in simulation is to disable the clash detection between stock fixture or tool holder. This is an optional thing. I know not many of you will agree to this, but it is. it can be disabled pro, uh, provided you know that you have taken the right length of tool and the right holder, and you know that your tool path is, are, are not likely to uh, hit the fixture. In such cases, you could just switch off uh, some of these values or all of these values, it can significantly improve your simulation time. And the last uh, and uh, not the least is basically to switch on multi-core support. 
uh, most of the times the multi-core support is is turned on automatically. The user need not do it if your if your system, if your hardware is already multi-core enabled, then the simulation automatically switches it on. But just in case you you have pressed it or you have you have switched it off, you could switch it on again, which will enable the multi-core support and the simulation will use the full capacity of all the cores available on your uh, system and speed up the simulation of your system or of, of the part itself. Uh, there is another question. Uh, I'm sorry, but I have to answer it. Okay. Uh, I'll just come in to answer that question now. Uh, basically, I'm going to go into the part. So, there are two ways in which you could do the setting, right? Uh, the two ways are the global settings that are uh, there when you uh, display tools, solid cam, and solid cam settings. Now, these things or these settings are our global settings. So, whatever you do here before you start solid cam is, is applicable to all the parts. But there is also a local settings. The local settings can be accessed out from here. So if I right click on the settings or double click on its settings and open, these are part settings that are valid only for the current part. So any settings that you would like to do, if you do it here, it's only valid for the current, uh, current part that is there on the screen. So if I go into the updated stock calculation, and if I go into solid verify, you can see that by default, the updated or save updated stock model for every number of operations is displayed. So this is the place where you need to make it zero. And the same thing also for quick solid verify, you make it to zero. There is another method uh, if you don't want. For example, let's say you just make it one and you also make it one. You have got a second option which says that save updated stock model only for lo operations with long toolpaths. What does this mean? When you press on this checkbox, basically solid cam will analyze each toolpath. Internally, there is a hard-coded value which describes what toolpaths are going to be considered long and what toolpaths are going to be considered short. So it checks every toolpath, and if certain toolpaths are seen going above that particular value, I'm not sure what exactly that value is, but if it if certain toolpaths are seen going above that particular value, what solid cam will do is it will start saving the stock for that toolpath only, so that you don't spend time to again recreate that stock when you're trying to do the simulation. So this is another option that you could use if you don't want to totally disable the saving of updated stock. This is, value, uh, this is valid both for solid verify as well as quick solid verify. So you can do uh, this setting in, uh, inside uh, the part settings itself. And this will be valid only for this part. So if you go to the next part, the settings again won't be valid. It will basically go back to the uh, global settings. Okay, let's cancel this. Let's see another, uh, some of other settings that I just explained. So if I go into the simulation, you can see that my target model is being loaded. Depending on the size of the model, it could take anywhere between, let's say, 15 to 20 seconds to sometimes few minutes because the part is really heavy, contains 100,000 surfaces. It will take a lot of time to load this part back into the simulation. So you need to go into that particular area and disable loading of the CAD part. And you can actually load back the CAD part manually using this button out here. It will it will load the CAD part manually. Okay? Right. Now, inside Solid Verify, again, there are settings. You can ignore the first one, which is the visual properties. It doesn't make sense because it's more to do with the background color and other colors. Let's go to General. You can see that by default, the animation redraw is set to about 15. I told you that if you're doing large parts, then you need to set this much higher. So if you're doing large parts, you could set this to 1,000. Or, sorry, not this one. This will be 15, but it will be by fixed step. 
and this would be 1000. So what it will do basically is it will refresh or redraw the screen after every 1000 blocks. This is valid both for quick solid verify as well as solid verify. Also we can look at the clash detection here. You could switch off. If you're not using any fixture, you could switch off the tool and fixture because it will always try to check if you have a fixture. But if there's no fixture, you could just switch this off because it won't make any sense to do a checking when you really don't have a fixture off, fixture in your model itself. Okay. You could also switch on the clash report at the end of the simulation. You don't want to see it now, but you would like to see at the end of the simulation. So we switch off and switch on the clash report at the end of the simulation. This is setting number one. In setting number two in the accuracy, I told you that our tool facet tolerance plays a very important role because in solid verify, it is doing a lot of Boolean operations, right? It's doing a lot of uh, Boolean operations and this tool facet tolerance will greatly affect the Boolean operations or the simulation speed itself. Okay, somebody asked for the uh, link for the webinar before this one. I'll definitely send you because uh, if you do not see that webinar, then this actually will not make much sense because it, this is just a continuation of the last webinar. So if you're using a large part, I would suggest using a value of bot 0.1. 0.1 or more than 0.1 for the tool facet tolerance. So we use that and we can uh, start the simulation. This would give, give us much faster simulation than it would come with uh, 0 0.01 because you can see that the simulation becomes much more quicker. So this the value of the tool facet tolerance greatly enhances the uh, the speed of simulation. If your facet tolerance is 0.2, you can straight away assume that your simulation speed would almost become double. So the tool facet tolerance plays a great role inside the speed of simulation. Okay, let's go to solid, uh, quick solid verify. So let me uh, run the simulation. And we run quick solid verify. You can see that in quick solid verify also we have our settings. In fact we have what another setting here is the facetting redraw uh, uh, or the facetting uh, facet rendering uh, uh, speed. I will explain to you when I'm rotating the model because it's very important uh, that this uh, bar needs to be set towards the faster one and not to the slower one. The slower one will delay your it because it will keep rendering it to a very high quality even when you're trying to rotate the model. So that will slow down your simulation completely. So let me, it's currently set to draft, it's fine. If I go into general, you can see again you have got animation redraw. It is set to uh, 1000, which is important. We have switched off the uh, class detection, so you won't see the class detection uh, dynamically, but you will see them at the end. It will show in colors where it has uh, where it has uh, gouged. So let me run the simulation. You can see that the refresh now is happening after every 1,000 blocks, and not at every uh, 15 or 20 blocks. That would have considerably slowed down the simulation speed itself. simulating it probably you're not going to see uh, the result immediately on your screen because uh, since the changes are happening very rapidly uh, you would not see the uh, effects straight away. I will 
pause the simulation and then you could you could have a look at the result. I'll pause it in another 10 seconds. Okay, we have done. You can look at the simulation. The simulated model is uh, ready. Now, the best part of Quick Solid Verify is its ability to give you photorealistic, uh, a photorealistic image of the cut part itself. So let's say I want to zoom into a particular area. I want to zoom into this area here. So I will just zoom out. You can see the moment I click on zoom, it's changed the facetting. It went, you, yeah, I, I told you before that you can set the bar to faster, that is draft, or to slower, which will give you high quality rendering. The moment I try to do some, some changes to the uh, orientation of the, uh, of the part, it immediately went into the draft quality because this will give me much faster and better control on how I'm going to rotate the part. It won't, it won't uh, uh, get stuck or wait for the rendering to finish and then only rotate. So it goes into a draft quality. It allows me to zoom into that area. Now when I zoom into that area, you can see that it's, it's really garbled. Okay? After that, I click on this high quality button. When I click on high quality button, it does the rendering of the surface mesh. You can see that it's much more clear. You can see those scallops much nicely. Okay? So this is basically the biggest difference between Quick Solid Verify and Solid Verify. In, in Solid Verify, you could actually zoom and your, your rendering won't change. So if it's you, whatever rendering you're seeing in zoom out condition, the same rendering you're going to see even in the zoom in condition. So it won't change. Whereas in Quick Solid Verify, now if I, if I want to zoom it out, uh, I'll just zoom it. If I rotate this part, you can see that it's lost its rendering. It's gone into what we call as a draft rendering. And then I can zoom into an area that I want to see more uh, clearly. So I'll zoom into this area here and then click on high quality. You can see how the rendering comes up. It looks much more clean and beautiful. It's almost photorealistic. Okay, so there are major advantages using Quick Solid Verify. And you should always make it a point to use Quick Solid Verify when you're doing large parts or when you're doing parts where you would like to zoom into details and check what has happened in those areas, right? So uh, these are some of our, our settings. Uh, this, again, the entire recording of this uh, webinar will be available on our website uh, probably on Sunday. If you have any questions, uh, you can please ask me the questions. If not, uh, it was really nice having you around. And we look forward to you attending uh, some of our webinars in the near future. Uh, yeah.